In this video, I'll show you how to take apart and reassemble a Stepper SDA2000 to optimize your controller. This video will be useful if you ever need to take apart your controller to access the internal components, such as the driver board, uh, driver chip modules, transceiver interface board, or the all relay board. All of these components are modular, removable, and replaceable. So if you need to take a, your controller apart to access them, watch this, watch this video and I'll show you how to do it. You'll need a couple of tools a Phillips head screwdriver, a 3 16 nut driver or crescent wrench, and a 1 16 hex key. You'll also need a pair of tweezers or pliers. So let's start by removing the SD card from the left side, sorry, right side of the controller. So right up here, ne next to the power button on the right side, there is a SD card in a little slot here. Use your fingernails or a tool to press it in, and then it will pop out. I'll set that aside. I can now undo the four Phillips pan head 440 screws using my Phillips screwdriver. All right, with those screws removed, I can just simply lift the cover off and set it aside. Here inside the controller, you'll notice a number of parts. There's the driver board with five driver modules, the all relay board, the transceiver interface board, the SD card reader board, and the display board. I'm going to start by removing the driver board. To do that, I'll first need to remove six jack screws from the back of the controller, two on the 25 pin connector and four on the transceiver interface. I'll take my 3 16 nut driver and undo them. I'll unplug the ribbon cable connecting the driver board to the display board by pulling straight up. And lastly, I'll undo two countersunk Phillips head 440 screws on either side of the driver board. Now I can simply lift the driver board out of the controller to remove the transceiver interface simply pull straight up to remove the all relay board I'll first need to undo a single screw here Then I can lift straight up. On the driver board equipped with driver chip modules, like you see here, removing the driver chips is very easy. Simply pull straight up to remove an entire driver chip module. These modules are modular and can be swapped around. They're totally interchangeable. So if you need to replace one, it's a simple act of installing a new one. You can also swap around driver chips. On the optimizer controller you'll receive five driver chips on your driver board and if you're using a controller that uses less than five driver chips you immediately have some spares. So reinstalling the driver chips is just as easy as taking them out. Just line up the pins with the header and push them down. Now you may encounter our older style of driver board that uses socketed driver chips. Here you can see a board with a single driver chip installed. There's empty sockets for three more. With this socketed driver chip, it's a little bit more difficult to swap the chips around. You can't pull them out with your fingers, so you'll need a tool. I like to use pliers or uh, 
uh, tweezers, anything that's thin that can get underneath the driver chip and act as a lever will work. But you want to be pretty careful doing this. There are some relatively fragile pins on this, this chip. So I'll get under there with my pliers. I'll kind of lever it up slowly, trying not to bend any of the pins. Once I've got my, my uh, tweezers under there, I can pull straight up, pop the chip out. So here you can see the pins I was talking about. You want to be careful when removing these not to bend the pins, unless you're planning to simply throw away the driver chip, in which case it doesn't really matter what happens to it. But when you're going to reinstall a driver chip, you want to make sure all the pins are straight before you do that. So you can take tweezers and kind of bend the pins back straight if they've been, if they've been bent. You don't want to do this too many times though as it will weaken the pins and they might break off. Reinstalling the driver chip is pretty simple. Just take your, your driver chip, note the little notch on one end, so I can get that in focus. So that little notch there, I need that to face towards the back of the driver board when it is installed. So I'll take my driver chip, I'll line up one row of the pins with the socket, kind of gently plug those in. Then I'll go to the other side, line up those pins. If any of the pins are bent, I'll need to straighten them out so that they go into the socket. Uh, make sure that none of the pins are bent underneath the driver chip. And once I've confirmed that all the pins are loosely in place, I can set the driver board down and apply some firm pressure to plug the chip in. All right, so that's the driver board. Now let's take a look at removing the display board. So the display board is held onto the controller chassis by two screws on the front here. So I'm going to undo those. Set the chassis aside. So here's the display board and face plate, as well as the option board. So I'll remove the option board by unscrewing these two screws. Then I can pull the board straight up and off. Next, I will need to remove the knobs. These knobs have a set screw on the side, which I can undo with my 1 16th hex driver. Then I'll be able to remove the front plate from the display board by undoing these four countersunk screws. With that, the display board just comes right off. And I still have my LCD module connected via a ribbon cable to the display board. To remove that LCD module, I can get my fingernail underneath this connector here, flip it up, get the ribbon cable out of there, set the dis LCD display aside, and here is the bare display board. All right, so that's a full teardown of the controller. I'm now going to simply reverse my steps to put it back together again.
when you're reinstalling the front plate, you want to make sure that the LCD module fits into the milled slot on the, the front plate here. So you might need to, you may need to poke your, your tweezers in there to reposition the uh, display properly. There we go. I'll take my countersunk 440 Phillips head screws. When you go to reinstall the transceiver interface and all relay boards, make sure that you line up the pins on the header and connector. A common mistake is to have them shifted like this. Have them shifted like this or even like this. Just make sure that they're, all the pins line up, press it into place. Same thing with the all relay board, only in this case there's two connectors, one here and one here. So I have to line up both of those with the header on the bottom of the all relay board. A trick when you're reinstalling the jack screws on the transceiver interface board is to loosely install all four of them and then go through and tighten them down. When you go to reinstall the SD card, make sure that the contacts face towards the front of the controller. And with that, you've reassembled your optimizer controller. Thanks for watching.